Let's dive right in. Today I'm going to discuss why Blender is, hands down, the best software for scientists looking for a place to start 3D visualization. I want to start by clarifying that this video is not a criticism of other 3D software, Autodesk's Maya, Fusion 360, and 3D Studio Max, as well as Houdini and Maxon's incredible Cinema 4D, are all powerhouses in their own right. In addition, Autodesk Inventor, SolidWorks, Unity, Unreal, Pixelogic ZBrush, as well as a wide range of 2D software such as Inkscape and the Adobe Suite, to name a few, are also more than worth mentioning, never mind traditional pen and paper illustrations. In fact, the simple truth is that no single piece of software is the best, and each brings something unique to the table or is simply better suited to certain applications. If I were talking to someone starting out in 3D, my first question before making any recommendation would always be, what do you want to do? So given that long disclaimer, why Blender and who slash what am I recommending it for? Specifically, I am recommending Blender to research scientists and engineers trying to visualize their work. If you want to get started in 3D artwork, cinema, or effects, you may be better served by other software. The same holds true if you want to do specialized work such as medical illustration. You'll likely be best served by at least trying out a few. And while I am very fond of Blender, I have used and enjoyed features of other software, and I supplement Blender with other applications when it suits my workflow. Sensibly, you should do due diligence and research what professionals in your desired field use and why. There are plenty of good resources discussing the options, and for a good place to start, I strongly recommend the Inspiration Tuts T -U -T -S, channel on YouTube which gives reasonably fair and balanced overviews of software for different uses. So now that we've established that this is my opinion, why do I think Blender is the best choice for scientists? This little screen here is borrowed from the blender.org website and it really nails all the key points, with few extras that I'd like to add. But it still boils down to three main points, namely that the user interface has been revamped to be much more accessible, the community that underpins Blender is truly incredible, and the main reason, Blender is free. In terms of functionality, I find myself constantly impressed by how much Blender can actually do. Combine a full set of tools for modeling and shading with the ability to import scientific data and the use of Python to customize the feature set, and you have most of the basics that working scientists will ever need to reach for. I've tinkered in 3D for nearly a decade, and when I started, I would not have recommended Blender. Like many others at the time, I reached for a student trial license of well-known 3D software, specifically 3D Studio Max. And that really ties in the second point. Three years later, my student trial license expired. The lab I worked in had a license for cinema, but it was an older version and only available on lab computers. As a scientist, I didn't want to shell out for an expensive professional license or a discount student license knowing that I would lose it later. To say Blender is now sufficient is a disservice to how impressive it now is, but it's really the UI improvements that have made it possible to recommend. And unlike a lab-specific license or student license that you lose access to at some point, Blender remains accessible and the files can be shared with your colleagues well after you've left the student part of your career behind. And all of that leads into the final point, which is the community. Blender's online community is frankly unrivaled. The incredible generosity of people who commit their time to making free educational content and tools with the software is nothing short of remarkable. If anything, science-specific content is one of the most lacking areas of that community, which more prominently features artists and programmers. In fact, many of the excellent resources I've found for scientific visualization have used C4D and Maya, primarily for medical illustration. That being said, the growing community of scientists that are picking up Blender means that tutorials and resources for extremely specialized content are becoming more widespread, and an increased attention to creating high-quality figures and graphics to improve scientific communication is only helping push that envelope. To wrap then, Blender is an incredible tool, and I stand by the idea that it is currently the best choice for scientists looking for a place to start working in 3D. As with most software, it really isn't one size fits all, and many of the alternatives are fantastic tools, or simply better depending on your requirements and situation. The simple reality is that good science requires a community to flourish, and by providing an open source tool with all the required capabilities and no paywalls, the Blender Foundation has made scientific visualization possible in a way that other 3D software simply doesn't at this time. So as always, Thanks for coming out. If you love Blender, let me know in the comments. If you feel I missed the mark, or if you use other 3D software for scientific visualization that I might have overlooked, please let me know. Either way, until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.